Um, if you're having real difficulty in getting the orientation correct, maybe you could put your wheel back in with your rotor and then you can sit this guy down and just give it an eyeball, making sure everything's sitting pro appropriately. The rotor should just reach the top of your brake pads which are inside. We're going to follow the same procedure as we did because we're going to keep the same rotor. So we're going to use the same washers or conical concave washer. It's two there and then you can run your bolt through. And the new bolts, if they're the same size, go ahead and use your new bolts. But if uh, your bolt, these new bolts are too short, then we're going to have to use our originals. And there's a little bit of white stuff on there. That's probably thread locker. Um, if this bolt turns really easily, then you can always put a, a fresh uh, dab of thread locker on there. Definitely don't want these guys coming loose because these don't go very tight as well. So make sure you have the correct orientation for your conical washers. This one's kind of inset. This one's curved, so they're going to match each other. So when these sit together, it's actually going to allow to move like this, kind of in a circular, so you can kind of get the appropriate um, adjustment. So I got the two washers sitting there. I'm going to go ahead and run this bolt through here. Be very careful. You can go ahead and get that started. Get it started by finger so it'll stay in place. Then we can grab our other bolt and then grab your other two conical or spherical washers. That's going to sit just underneath. Boom. And then run your bolt with your other two washers, your two conical washers with your thin washer. And get that started. And make sure that uh, both bolts, if they were different sizes, that short bolt goes over here or short, short bolt goes in the back. It just Those are the things you need to keep an eye on or just take pictures or take video of yourself. So these we're gonna tighten up very lightly. We need this to still move so when we put our wheel back in here it's not going to get in the way of the rotor. The rotor needs to find its home then this guy will be adjusted so I'm just gonna leave this take all the most of the slack out but I want this guy to wiggle a little bit just like it is. Alright so now we can finish running our line here. Be careful not to kink this guy. So these systems, they do come pre-bled from caliper all the way through the line into the lever. If we're lucky, it's the right length, everything looks good. If we do do any trimming, it's, it's mainly for cosmetic purposes. Um, well, I guess if it's too long, we it also maybe get snagged on a branch or something like that. But we're gonna get some zip ties for this bike. We can go ahead and start zip tying you can, and just do it loosely. We can always go back. They're plastic, so if we make a mistake, we can always snip and then just add some new ones. But there's a little little inset right there where that hose wants to sit. Um, pretty good about this. So I'm gonna tighten that guy all the way down. We can go back and snip that later. And then we're coming back up here, staying on the outside of the frame. Next one is right up here. Just run that second one. Make sure you do grab that hose. I accidentally thought I was seeing correctly and zip tied nothing and missed the whole housing. And then even though you're doing this finger tight, we don't need to do it any tighter. We can, there's still a little room for sliding. So if we kind of mis, misguided this, uh, did it too tight, the bike, as it's moving, this rear triangle is going to come up. Um, so if anything, our housing here is just going to relax in the middle. It's probably going to droop. And then as it extends back, it's just going to go back to this system right here. Um, this would be more critical if this was running down here on the bottom of the bike because then the line would be coming down and then actually coming back up. So as this rear triangle, you hit a bump, this goes up, it may want to pull some housing. So we definitely have to have a little bit of slack. So that's why some of these bikes you see a little bit of loop or droopiness. And that's just to allow for the bike to move when it's uh, Hitting, hitting bumps and the suspension is activated. So let's make sure we're following the correct line. Come down and around. Gonna have a nice loop here. Typically the front brake line will be always be in front, whether it's a mountain bike, road bike, hydraulic, non-hydraulic, that front brake line usually comes out in front and it just finishes right there. So this guy wouldn't go inside. But um, as you can see, we have uh, 
kind of a loopiness right here. So we'll probably end up having to trim this. So these Shimano's, they have a nice uh, safety system here. You can take this bolt out and there's a hinge so the clamp will open, but the clamp won't open until you hit a little button right here. So you have to push and hold it while you open this lever. That's part of their safety system. If you did lose a bolt, uh, it'll get loose, but it won't fall off your bike uh, unless you push that button, which I doubt you'll do while you're riding your bike. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take this bolt off. Uh, you're gonna be using a four millimeter for that. Remove that bolt completely. And it's usually one size fits all. The, they kept the standard for uh, brake clamps and bar sizes, so that's a great thing, very nice of them. So now, as you can see, this clamp will not open until we push that button. There's actually some writing right here. It says push to open. It has a little arrow. So you just have to use your fingers, push that down, and then just get that guy open. Now it's fully open and we could just put it back on there. So pretty simple from here on out. Usually that brake lever is gonna be closest to the end of the bar. And most of that lever sits over your shifter. Go ahead and clamp that. So that guy's on there. So bolts out there is off still. Um, but this is loose, but we're not losing our lever all, all together. So that's your safety system. You're cruising down the trail, that bolt comes out, and you're like, oh no, but at least you can get your fingers on something and grab it and squeeze it. So um, they didn't put anything on this bolt. There's no thread locker or grease. Wouldn't be a bad idea to put something. Um, if you have no thread locker, a little bit of grease wouldn't hurt. And I'm sure if you read a lot of forums or whatnot, people go back and forth about what's best. I actually heard some guy uses both. He says the thread locker is not activated until you put grease. So, you know, to each their own. I have not checked with manufacturers to see what's what. And if you're unsure about your position, don't worry about it. Just get it in the general vicinity. Just slightly snug it up. We can always go back to fine adjust later. Boom, that's pretty much it. But now we have to see how much slack we have. So we have one more mount. Right now we have all this cable. We have, I think we have one more mount, which is right over here. We're just gonna snap that back in. And now that's nice and clean. So this is what we're looking at. We have all this coming out and then all the way around. So definitely a ton of excess. It's way too much. So they said we're gonna trim this guy and for trimming, you're pulling your rubber boot back, which will expose another nut. And that's, I think that's an eight millimeter. You unscrew that nut a few turns, that slides back, and then your hose dislodges from your lever. And then we do a measurement. In this case, you know, we're just doing an eyeball measurement. We're probably gonna take off maybe five, six, seven, eight inches. And then we're gonna use the hardware they gave us, which is our olive and our barb and use our little tool that they gave us to clamp the hose, reinstall that, put the hose back in, and then tighten our, our nut back up, and then we're good to go. If we're nice and easy, or doing it just very carefully, we won't lose a lot of fluid, or any fluid per Shimano, we should not have to bleed the system. We'll still have good braking power here. All right, now, so now we're ready to mount our front caliper. Again, we got our Dior logo sitting on the outside. And I'll go ahead and bring this through the middle of the fork since our line is going to be running in the middle of the fork next, right next to the tire. And then it's going to sit like that. So um, might be a little tricky if you're doing this by yourself, but it can be done. I think a lot of stuff can be done where you just get creative or you accept the challenge when things get tough. Try stuff by yourself. So we got two washers that go right in between the adapter and the caliper, if you're steady, you can get this started. Get that screw in there. And thread a few turns, boom. Now he's all set we can go back, get our second bolt. Remember, make sure your conical washers are in the correct orientation where they can kind of float on each other. So two underneath the caliper. So you just gotta be creative and hopefully you have nimble fingers. And then once you're in there, make sure you're nice and straight to get good alignment. There we go. Boom. And then we can just tighten them up to the point where we just barely have some jiggle there. 
All right, so make sure your hydraulic line is in between your fork running up. If your fork has a little clamp right there, go ahead and get that going. Um, or it might be easier just to put your clamp on your handlebar first. That way you don't have the weight of this guy. So let's do that actually, that sounds better. So again, we're taking that bolt out, opening up that little safety, choosing the right tool. On the inside, and this housing is up in front, in front of everybody, and boom. All right, so this is an early fork, so it doesn't have that built-in little clamp for the housing, but we're going to just mimic how we had it before. So probably in front of this post. These right here, if you have these, this would allow you to put some brake posts in here so you can run V-brakes. Uh, but I don't, uh, I wouldn't do that. I like my disc brakes. So, and then we'll run another one up here. And we'll keep that a little bit loose for now. Boom. Main thing is that we, there's no looseness, there's no bulging that's gonna rub your tire on the inside. So want that somewhat tight, come through. Not so tight, don't tighten up your zip size so tight that it actually starts to squeeze your hydraulic line. Keep that in mind, we don't wanna compress it, um, but we do want it very snug. So that's, that's about it. Um, nice bolt-on system, pre-bled brakes. You can buy those almost anywhere. You can probably get, um, I'm, I would imagine any brand comes that way nowadays. Uh, we just have some excess. So this is the front line. Front line is not terrible. If anything, we might shave a couple inches, uh, but the rear, um, pretty bad. Definitely got to take off at least six, six inches or so. Um, but other than that, if you had to go ride tomorrow um, without cutting this, you could just kind of zip tie everything together so it's not flopping around and go out and ride. Um, brakes should be hitting well. Um, you could put your wheels back on test your brakes, um, system should be ready to go out the door. If you did put new rotors on, it will take some time for your brake pads, brake pad material to get onto the rotors. Um, the porousness of the metal needs to get uh, that brake pad material in it. So it actually becomes even more, uh, more grip, more, uh, what do they call it, resistance. So as that builds up, your braking power will get stronger and stronger. So it will take some time to get up to full power. Uh, so I recommend riding around uh, your driveway or the street, be very careful. Um, you, what I like to do is um, put it in a gear where you can stand up and pedal and just gently hold the brake levers. So you're dragging the brakes very lightly and that in time could take 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Uh, definitely your heart rate's gonna get up, <clears throat> but that will speed the process up of building your brake power up, getting that brake pad material onto the rotor surface. And then you'll start to feel it get stronger and stronger where you won't have to squeeze the lever so hard. And during that time period, you do not want to lock up the brakes, especially your rear mainly. Uh, you don't want to skid. So when you do lock up that brake and hold that rotor, it's just gonna put a lot of pad material maybe in that one spot. When if for new rotors, that could be a problem. So it becomes a bit of a, of a more of a resistance spot. So as you're braking and you uh, hit that lever, you might feel a pulsation where that brake pad wants to catch that area on the rotor and kind of want to feel like it wants to stop or lock up. So you want to avoid that, avoid locking your brakes up and skidding until you got full power. So get it to where you're satisfied on, a, on your test rides and you can go ride it. Um, and then after that, yeah, it should be much better and you can probably go ahead and skid and whatnot. Um, and then I like to do a little test for the front brake. Um, just be very careful, roll very slowly in the driveway, hit the brake hard enough, keep seated, and then uh, anticipate that rear wheel. You want to bring that rear wheel up. That's my test. Um, I don't recommend doing it if you're not comfortable with it, but um, that will tell me uh, where the brake power is on this uh, brake system. So every brake system is a little different. Some are gonna be more powerful than others. Again, these are kind of on the lower level of the Shimano, but it still has that good trickle down technology. So I'm um, pretty, pretty happy with these brakes. Um, I think they're, they're 
pretty darn safe. Um, you jump up to something higher like an XT or XTR, those can be pretty finicky. So you tap that brake, it's gonna stop you immediately. So it takes a little while to get used to that. These are not quite that way, these Dior's, especially if they're running uh, organic or resin brake pads. They're gonna be feel a little bit better as far as modulation. Not gonna lock up so quick. And, and so quick, that could be a half a second. Um, <clears throat> again, that just takes time to get used to it. Um, and typically resin, they say, are quieter. But uh, I like to run uh, metallic or semi-metallic uh, because it's just, uh, they last longer and they're more durable. If you got going through a little bit of water, mud, stuff like that, they'll last longer. And the noise, as far as noise, it's, it's really not an issue for me at all. I don't even notice. Um, I don't think it's a big deal.